Hi, everyone. Welcome to the MRP Tech Podcast. This is episode 124. My name is Matt, and this is the weekly podcast discussing everyday tech for everyday people. And this week, if you're a frequent listener to the show, you get two episodes and one this week. As I'm really excited to talk about my favorite show of the year, the episode where I discuss uh, many of my favorite audiobooks that I've listened to throughout the year. Now, last week, uh, I missed an episode, so I figured I'd, I'd do two this week just to uh, have some fun with, with all of you, and I'm really looking forward to this episode. For those of you who have uh, maybe just started listening recently, every year in December, I really like to sort of reflect back on some of the audiobooks that I listen to on my drive to work. I have got a, a basically an hour commute to work and an hour commute back from work. Now, when I listen to audiobooks, sometimes I'm looking for educational resources. Sometimes I'm looking for great stories. Other times I try a book that I would never have expected to like or uh, one that someone may have recommended to me. So I've been an Audible subscriber for several years now and really makes the drive to work uh, a lot more manageable, a lot more bearable. And I feel like I'm using that time wisely. So I mix up with uh, my commute. I mix mix up listening to podcasts, missing uh, and filling in uh, the gaps in between with audiobooks of all types. Now, before this show, I went back and I listened to my audiobook picks from last December. And if you'd like to do that too, it's episode 79 of the MRP Tech Podcast. I believe I published it November 30th of 2017, so last November. You can find that episode on YouTube along with all of the other episodes of this podcast all the way back to episode number one. And as I listened to that podcast, I realized that all of those books that I selected last time and even the year before are still great picks. And the way that I do this is it's not that I'm uh, talking about new books that just came out within the last year, but I'm talking about books that I personally have picked, I personally have read, and think I'd like to share it with all of you. Maybe some of you will will check out uh, these books at some point in time. There are many resources for audiobooks. You can find them at libraries. You can um, subscribe to something like Audible or other audiobook providers, and maybe you'll find some enjoyment out of them too. So as I go through Uh, my top 10 picks for this year, here's what I want you to keep in mind. I'm pretty picky about the reviews that I give as far as um, the review of the narrator, the review of the story, and overall performance. So it takes a lot to get a five-star sort of review as far as um, when I review these books for Amazon. So I'm pretty picky because I I know that if I make it a five-star book, that's something that I'm going to want to go back and listen to again. And this year, as we get into talking about the my podcast or my audiobook choices for this year, some of the books that I read were quite lengthy to the point where it took me several months to to get through them. So that's going to reflect highly on my choices for this year. The first book that I want to talk to coming in at number 10 is a book that caught my eye when I took a trip over the summer. And I really started thinking about how addictive smartphones could be or the internet and things like that. And there were apps that I reviewed on the show, such as Moment or the Screen Time app for uh, iOS, basically keeping track of how long you'd use your devices during the day. And I mentioned this book on the show. This comes in at number 10. The name of the book is Irresistible, The Rise of Addictive Technology and the Business of Keeping Us Hooked. A really fascinating story. Some people find it disturbing. Others find it informative. Some people just find it thought-provoking. So the idea here, Adam Alter uh, is a profession, professor of psychology and marketing at NYU, tracks the rise of behavioral addiction through the 1990s all the way through the present. 
basically talks about the origins of internet addiction, gaming addiction, addiction in general, and why over the last 15 to 20 years, or maybe even a little bit longer, many people are now becoming addicted to technology, addicted to things like the internet, and sort of what we can do about it. So this book was not necessarily one of the the greatest and, and, and best written books that I read this year, but just the, the thought-provoking nature of the book puts it out number 10 for my list. Overall, I gave the book a three out of five stars. Performance, I gave about a four. And the story, I also gave about a number three. But it, as I read it, it sort of made me want to keep track of how much time I'm on a computer or how much time I spend just browsing Facebook or social media, these types of things. And what I can do to sort of cut back on just wasted time and put that effort in other areas to be a little bit more productive. So that's number 10, Irresistible by Adam Alter. Coming in at number nine, sort of the flip side of the last book that I just read. This book is a history of the iPhone. Also mentioned this one on the show. Now, I didn't mention all of these on the show, but these first two, coming in at number nine, The One Device, The Secret History of the iPhone, written by Brian Merchant and narrated by Tristan Morris. This covers the design aspects, the secrecy, those that were involved with the development of the original iPhone, the parts and manufacturing, building, uh, getting supplies from uh, mines all over the world, which uh, areas mined lithium, which which areas uh, mined the other metals from the iPhone, talking about how iPhones can be sold on the black market, the uh, landfills filled with with old phones that uh, many people in third world countries scavenge through and sell on the black market. Really a another fascinating story that just encompasses the whole history of the iPhone from the Steve Jobs era all the way up until uh, it's, I know, 2017-ish. Basically talking about bit by bit the history of the iPhone, how it was developed, and how it had such an impact in the world, and whether it's from the type of glass that was made or the evolution of the form factor and such. This book is the first book of, of my top 10 pick that gets five stars all around. So five stars for overall, uh, for an overall audiobook performance. The narrator was outstanding and the story just outstanding. Five stars for each. And really... Even if you're not an iPhone user, it's there's so much history involved in this book and so much research and development that really makes this book a worthwhile listen. Now, moving along, as I moved to, uh, as I went back and I listened to last year's episode of, of the audiobooks, because I wanted to make sure that I didn't uh, talk about any of the same books again that I did last year. I try to talk about all the books that I've read during the past year, but you know, I may forget here or there when I actually read the book. And, um, so I had to go back and listen to make sure that, that, um, I wasn't already, uh, duplicating a book that I already talked about. And in that last episode, I talked about a book one of a story that I wasn't sure if I was going to like or not. And I talked about a book written by Dennis E. Taylor and narrated by Ray Porter that was called We Are Legion, We Are Bob. And the premise of this first book was a character whose name is Bob. He, he was killed, um, but luckily had just put uh, insurance down on a new type of technology that would uh, freeze him for an indefinite period of time until he could be revived. He was actually revived inside of a computer and sent on a particular mission uh, to be a part of a group of interstellar vehicles that would reproduce themselves over and over and over uh, as they made their way through the universe and expanded. They were all sentient. They are all um, basically had minds of their own. And as time went on with this book, 
it became a real fascinating story, and I really, really enjoyed the book. I wasn't sure if I was going to go on to book two or book three of this series, and the the series is called the Babaverse series. And similar to, let's say, Oh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but not as slapstick humor. Um, there are, There's a lot of humor in the part, but there's a lot of serious parts as well. So coming in at number eight is book two of the Babaverse story, uh, For We Are Many. This book takes place 40 years after book one. Now, what I was trying to think of earlier in saying was that Bob uh, Johansson now becomes a sentient computer, basically controlling the, he's the controlling intelligence of a von Neumann probe. And what those are, are probes that can be sent into space that replicate themselves. They are self-sufficient and they are will forever and indefinitely, as long as they have materials, uh, mine the materials, get the materials they need, and build whatever they need to continue on their journey to uh, for scientific research or whatever it's programmed to do. Now, 40 years later, uh, you know, Bob was once human. He's got to cope with now becoming this sentient uh, intelligence. And basically, a, a calamity happens on Earth. 99% of the human race is um, dead or dying. And humanity has to move on. They encounter um, their first life forms outside of of um, Earth, and basically, the story takes a lot of of twists and turns that made it fun to listen to. Now, I didn't really at first care for book one. It was a good book, but I wasn't high. I didn't think very highly of it. But uh, it was one of Audible's best of 2016. So it was a very highly anticipated sequel. I didn't realize that um, it was going to become this well known. So, so this book, book two is called For We Are Many. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, first one, We Are Legion, We Are Bob. This one called For We Are Many, five stars all around. Ray Porter, if you have not listened to a book by Ray Porter, you are missing out one of the best narrators I've ever listened to. Overall performance, um, uh, overall five stars, performance five stars, a story five stars. Great book all the way around. Now, these von Neumann probes played by this character, Bob, as he creates new ones, they all take on personalities of their own and they take on different names. Now, Ray Porter has to not only play this character Bob, but has to narrate in a way that all of these other newly created Bobs with different names all have the same history, all have the same background, all have the same memories, but they are now making a future for themselves. So he has to change his narration based off one character for countless other characters. And he does a fantastic job, which is why coming in at number six is book three of the Bobaverse series. This one is called All These Worlds. Um, it's again written by Dennis E. Taylor, narrated by Ray Porter. Book three of the series continues on uh, with everything that I just said. I wasn't going to think that I wasn't going to, I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I liked the first two books. How can they make a, a book just as good as the first two? Um, and this book, extremely well written, five stars all around once again. So with, and, and the, for the exact same reasons I just narrated uh, before with Ray Porter being the narrator, it cannot be a bad book by any means. Coming in at number five, I want to talk about this book once again. I believe I mentioned this book on the show when I did a podcast on lucid dreaming. Oddly enough, the episode that I did on Lucid Dreaming was one of my most listened to episodes. Um, and it wasn't even a tech episode. I added some tech things to the podcast, but seemed to be something that a lot of people were really interested in. It was, it was one of the most uh, downloaded shows for the year. So a lot of people apparently had uh, reason or interest to, to listen to this. And um, 
So I'm going to put this on the number five for this list. It's called Lucid Dreaming, Gateway to the Inner Self by Robert Wagoner, narrated by Mel Foster. Now, this is not a how-to book about lucid dreaming. They do have some tips and tricks in there, but it's more of an experience of a, a, a list of stories and a list of experiences from various people, including Robert Wagner, about lucid dreaming, about what you can actually do, uh, some of the, the myths and misconceptions behind lucid dreaming, as well as um, years and years and years of documented research on how it can benefit you if you take the time to learn how to do it. Uh, lucid dreaming, if you don't know, is learning how to uh, wake up within a dream you're still dreaming, you are consciously aware in your dream, and you can create your own dreamscapes, you can um, talk with dream characters, you can have conversations with, uh, with, with dream characters, figures, whatever you would want to call them, and um, the list goes on and on and on, and there's really endless possibilities because you're actually still in a dream. So lucid dreaming, gateway for the inner self, all around five stars, performance from the narrator, five stars, the story itself, I give it five stars. Really incredible, incredible book if you're interested in dreaming. So that that's number five, again, by Robert Wagner, narrated by Mel Foster. The next few books again, are in a series. Coming in at number four, this was a book that I came across after I got um, disappointed with the King Killer Chronicles. Now, if you listen to episode 79 of this podcast, I talked about the King Killer Chronicles having book one and book two and the narrator being finished with book, or excuse me, the author being finished with book three but hasn't been published yet, still making changes, had been seven or eight years at that point. Um, book three still has not been released from the King Killer Chronicles. So I went on to another series that I kept seeing that was highly recommended. Coming in at number four is book one of this series from the Stormlight Archive. This one is called The Way of Kings, book one of the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, narrated by Kate Reading and Michael Kramer. This is a long book. A really, really long book. It's 45 hours long. Probably one of the most incredible fantasy books, adventure books that I have ever read, including Lord of the Rings. This is like Lord of the Rings in much greater detail. So the premise here is there's a is a world known as Rishar. It's it's a world of stone and storms. And there is constant, there are many kingdoms, there are many battles. There is something that's called the Everstorm that comes frequently. And basically the, the, the people in this area cannot survive these storms. So every time this storm comes, people take shelter, they cannot be outside. And... Um, with this storm comes basically centuries and centuries of battles for territory, for um, for for either preserving kingdoms and land or trying to gain land and kingdoms or good versus evil and that type of thing. In the history, there was a group of or an order known as the Knights Radiant. They um, had many sort of mystical abilities that basically were, were, I don't know, powers given to them from this storm, from things that they, that they call stormlight in this, in this book. And uh, they were originally, um, these, these radiants were protectors. The people turned on them and um, eventually thought that they were uh, not good and they disbanded. And over time, um, they disappeared, and now things are changing in the world where these uh, radiants are now sort of rediscovering themselves. They, they're they rediscovering the abilities that they could have. What a cool book. Um, it is culturally diverse. There are strong male characters, strong female characters, and 
many different races all over uh, in this book. Highly, highly, highly recommend The Way of Kings. Five stars all the way around. With that, the sequel is also out. Book two, Words of Radiance. Again, written by Brandon uh, Sanderson. This is my choice for number three. This is book two of the Stormlight Archive. Uh, Michael Kramer and Kate Reading, again, narrators for this book. This book is even longer than the first book. This is 48 hours long. The story continues. I don't want to give any spoilers away. Highly, highly, highly recommend this book. And so many of these um, books have been been highly talked about online and in audible forums and such that I'm going to keep moving along. And my choice for for uh, number two in this this podcast uh, choice for best books is the third book of this series called Oathbringer. Now, this came out last November, I believe. This book, 55 hours long. And I'm halfway through this book, and it's just as good as the first two books, if not better. These, This is a long read, and, and I have to take this in sort of small steps because there's just so much to take in with these three books. I want to know the end. I want to know how it happens. And um, I'm about let's say 16 hours into this book at this point, it has not disappointed. Um, I sort of, because it's so long, I have to sort of take a break and listen to podcasts for a while and then come back to this book. But these three books have taken up a huge chunk of time in this year's worth of, of audible reading. And so that's why I, they are coming in at uh, choices, uh, picks number four, three, and two, because they are so well-written uh, I cannot speak any highly, any more highly of the Stormlight Archive book series. So check those out, all on Audible and other um, resources as well. All right, we're down to number one for a pick. This book was recommended to me, and I mentioned it on a show a while ago. If you like history at all, if you like major events in history at all, if you are concerned at all about... Um, uh, you know, major uh, events that change history. Krakatoa, the day the world exploded, August 27th, 1883, was by far the best book I've read all year long. Written by Simon Winchester, also narrated by Simon Winchester. I really liked the fact that the author also narrated the book with this with this choice. I did a whole episode on Krakatoa. So I don't really need to explain it again. It was just about a a month or two ago. So going back maybe five or 10 episodes, uh, the the legendary annihilation of the island uh, of Krakatoa, the volcano exploded, the sound wave traveled the circumference of the earth at least three or four times, if not more, changed history forever and led into the, the sort of modern age. Overall, five stars for this book. Uh, performance narrator, five stars. The story, five stars. Great book all around. That comes in at number one. And so my top 10 picks for this year, Irresistible, The Rise of Addiction Technology, The One Device, The Secret History of the iPhone, books two and three of the Bobiverse series, We Are Legion and For We Are Many. Also... Uh, excuse me, All These Worlds is book three. Lucid Dreaming, the gateway, gateway to the Inner Self. The Way of Kings, book one of the Stormlight Archive. Words of Radiance, the Stormlight Archive, book two. And Oathbringer, Stormlight Archive, book three. Last but not least, Krakatoa, The Day the World Exploded. Those are my picks, favorite picks for this year. And if you're an audiobook listener, I'd love to hear what your favorite picks were for the year, what your favorite books are. These are sort of wide ranging. Some are sci fi, some are fantasy, some are uh, educational, some are um, borderline metaphysical with, with lucid dreaming, that type of thing, and fantasy. 
And so it's a wide range of books and I'm always looking for other great stuff to talk about. And you can email me your favorite audio books. Just email me at mrptechreviews at gmail.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me. And if you want to go back and check out some of the older episodes, you can find some of them on podnuts.com. If you're looking for really old episodes, they're all on YouTube. Uh, episodes one all the way through 124. You'll find those there. Now, my least favorite book. Here's another thing I like to do with this podcast is I like to talk about my least favorite podcast of the year. Or excuse me, I always say podcast. My least favorite audio book of the year. My least favorite audiobook this year is not necessarily a bad book, but it took a long time for me to read through this. Um, it was in the library, and I would read it for a couple hours here and there whenever I could. If we went on a road trip, we'd, we'd uh, listen to it there. A book by Walter Isaacson, narrated by Edward Herman, and it's actually a book on Einstein, his life and universe. I wanted to know a lot about Einstein. It talks a lot about physics. I also talked a lot about his personal life. But the narration was kind of um, bland and slow paced at certain points. It was a fascinating book, just not one of my favorites. It didn't hit me uh, the right way that I thought it would. So my least favorite book of the year in this case was a good book, just not what I was looking for when I when I read it. So if you want to learn about Einstein, that's a good read. Narrator, yeah. Not really the greatest, but um, my least favorite read of the year. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop here. That's going to do it for this week. If you'd like to donate to this show to help this show uh, help me out, you can go to mrptechreviews.com, click the Patreon button. Uh, that'll bring you to the Patreon page, patreon.com slash mrptech. You can become a patron. Otherwise, hit the donate button on my website if you just want to do a one-time thing. Help me out and... Uh, keeps me motivated keeps me uh, working hard for all you guys so that's gonna do it for this week guys thanks so much for listening we will see you next time